Ezekiel chapter 11. Moreover, the Spirit, that'd be the Holy Spirit, lifted me up. Ezekiel keeps getting, I hate to use the word that movie, transported. The Holy Spirit keeps bringing him to these different places. So I guarantee what the scripture was the scripture. When the church is raptured, that's the Holy Spirit bringing us up. And brought me into the east gate of the Lord's house. There's the temple again. Which look at eastward. And behold the door of the gate. Five and twenty men. Twenty-five men. And it's kind of ironic that... Um, In chapter 8, verse 16, that there are 25 men here, and they're involved, they're are involved in the sunrise service. Scripture with scripture. Among whom I saw Jazz Anaiha, the son of Azur. It's amazing how the Bible don't want to make it any other jazz than them, the son of and Penaliah, the son of Benaniah, princes of the people, people of authority. That would be almost like our Senate and our House re representatives. But there are people who say, You ought not to name names. People say to me when I preach on the you know, you know, bash the Catholics, bash the Baptists, bash the... You know. God does. Holy Spirit does. Paul did. Jesus did. Peter did. Moses did. Joshua did. What are you going to do? When we do what the Bible does by God with godly people, and then people come up, you ought not to be doing that. All right, I wonder what field you're speaking when you're going against the Bible. Then said he, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Son of Man, these are the men that devise mischief. And give wicked counsel in this city. <laughs> the world's full with Jazaniah and Penaliah. Their goals is cause trouble mayhem. Their trouble is their counsel is wicked. There are people today, vice and women, go ahead, kill your baby. Go ahead, don't listen to your parents. Go ahead, reach for your goal, believe your heart, trust in you, and you, and you are the great you of you. That's devising mischief, what they're teaching the children today. Wicked counsel. Now, well, you don't know what sex you are. Wicked counsel. Evolution. Devise mischief and wicked counsel. All right, open your NIVs. Open up your auxilian. Alexandrian text. Devise mischief in wicked counsel. It's synonaries. Which say, It is not near. Let us build houses. This city is a cauldron. And you can see it's a large kettle of boil. You, you've seen them. And the bad, you know, you know it's, it's, it's sad enough to know that when we think of cauldron today, you know, we think of a witch in a, you know, a stew and I am new. We don't think of what a Bible. We don't think about the old time. And we had a place where I lived, Mystic, Connecticut. You had Mystic uh, uh, Seaport. And there would be some houses you go in there and they would have the colonial life. And you would see in the kitchen women dressed up in the, in the fashion of the day. And they would have that cauldron there. 
And then, you know, they had the baked potatoes, and they made making a stew. Well, here's this cauldron. And they're saying, let's build houses, this city's a cauldron, and we be the flesh. So let's build house. Let's remain in the city and let's build because everything's going to be great and we're protected by this big iron pot. Nothing's going to get to us. Why would they say this? Well, you got to run scripture to scripture with the boring Old Testament, Jeremiah. Prophet Jeremiah chapter 1. Verse 13. Let's see why they're saying what they're saying. Now, this is early on in Jeremiah. <laughs> okay? We're in 11 chapters of Ezekiel. Ezekiel and Jeremiah run in parallel. Ezekiel would run over the captivity, the final captivity of Judah, where, where Jeremiah will, will pretty much stop after uh, Jehanan is dead and the book of Lamentations, then Ezekiel takes over. Then Ezekiel takes over and takes us post captivity. So, Jeremiah now has been preaching, and so is Ezekiel. We take Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 13. The word of the Lord came unto me the second time. What sees thou? He said, I see a seething pot. And the face thereof is a toward the north. Then the Lord said unto me, Out of the north be Babylon, and evil shall break forth unto the inhabitants of the land. What are you going to do with that? We come back to Ezekiel, and we find Ezekiel, oh, this city is a cauldron. You know, Jeremiah said, <laughs> they are in complete defiance of what Jeremiah is preaching. We don't need to worry. Jeremiah didn't tell them to build houses. He told them, go. Go into Babylon. In Babylon, build houses. Not in Jerusalem. So we see a rebellion against I, I mean, yeah, uh, Jeremiah in their words. And then verse 4, therefore prophesied against them. Prophecy, O son of man. God's going to answer to them. And the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me. So as we see with Samson, as we see with some of the characters in the Old Testament, we see the Holy Spirit coming, and we see the Holy Spirit going. That doesn't happen with a Christian. So you'll get somebody say, oh, you know, there were Christians in the Old Testament. Not by the Holy Spirit, they weren't. A Christian, the Holy Spirit abides, stays in the Christian. In the Old Testament, say, such as Ezekiel, definitely know with Samson, but look at the life of Samson. Comes and goes. So the Spirit of the Lord, now watch for something else here, fell upon me, said unto me, the Spirit of the Lord, said, the Holy Spirit speaks. You know, we don't have a balance in our life. The Pentecostals put too much on the Holy Spirit. And the Baptists don't put enough on the Holy Spirit. And that we need to realize the power of the Holy Spirit is He speaks. Thus saith the Lord. Thus have ye said, O house of Israel. 
For I know the things that come into your mind. God knows your thoughts, even if you're wicked and unclean. Even if you are not his child, his people, he knows your thoughts. Did not Jesus all the time with the Pharisees and says he knew what they were thinking and they were against him. Ye, these princes, have multiplied your slain in the city, in this city. I'm going to sneeze, so forgive me. They are not listening to Jeremiah, the word of God. And it's causing people to be killed by the, by the Babylonian army. And it's only going to get worse and the city will be taken. As we went through Jeremiah, we came to the last captivity of Babylon coming in and destroying the city and destroying the temple. We will come to that point again in Ezekiel. And the people are being slain by the Babylonians thinking all is well. And there are people today because of religion, all is well, there must not be a hell. And there are people thinking, oh, it must be good because I'm going to heaven, I said a prayer, and then die and their soul ends up forever in hell. By those that, we go back to verse 1, I mean verse 2, they devise mischief and give wicked counsel. If a man up in a pulpit gets up there and says, come forward and say this prayer, that's mischief because that prayer may not save you without belief in Jesus. That's wicked counsel. Invite them to church, invite them to the chicken dinner, but, you know, let's get numbers. And if the sole purpose is not the gospel, that's wicked counsel, that's mischief. And you got people thinking, oh, I went to church, God must be happy. Well, I know the pastor in the church is happy because in the numbers of the books, you were a number. And I know a few pastors where somebody's left the church and you go up to the pastor and you're not trying to be cruel. You're not trying to spread rumors. You pray for the person. And you went up to the pastor and said, Hey, pastor, what happened to such and such? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? That's one of your sheep. Don't you preach about the 99 and the 1? Yeah. What about that one that got away? Well... We try to bring others. That is wicked counsel. That is devised mischief. That there are people who are dying. You realize these people that are slain in the city. Ye have multiplied the slain in the city. Do you realize these people are dying and going to hell because they rebelled against God, thinking they were doing right by the men that were teaching wrong. And those people are in hell today. And so are the ones that taught them. I feel sorry for preachers and pastors and Sunday school teachers and evangelists and missionaries that will end up in hell too and all the people that they deceived to thinking, oh, they were saved. They did what God told them to do. They were deceived. Wicked counsel. Ye have filled the streets Therefore, with the slain. Jeremiah told us that they have filled the streets, they have filled the city, they have filled the temple with the gods. Ezekiel tells us they're over there weeping for Tammuz. They're over there worshiping the sunrise service. And I can tell you Baptist churches that are involved in that mess today. And they'll stand out in front of the, the eastern sunrise on Resurrection Sunday, and it was not the date of Jesus' resurrection, another lie. Think, 
Oh, how great we are! We got a problem. You know why we don't want to read the Old Testament? Well, not me, because I read it. Because when we read the Old Testament, we may see ourselves in the Old Testament, and we may find it as a hammer hitting our little toe. Ah, that's what I'm doing. I don't want to read that. I want to be Elijah. I want to go up on Mount Carmel, and I want to harass the Catholics. I want to harass the Pentecostals. I want to harass them, and I want the fire from God come down. I want everything, but I don't want to hear about the false prophets that I may be, the false teaching that I may be. I had a preacher mad at me. He come to our farmer's market ministry. He didn't mention anything about the church. I'm not there for the church. Because the church can't save you. Gospel, heaven, hell, Jesus. Mock your religion. Because your, your religion is a mockery. Going to church is a mockery. There's death. The worst thing that could happen is someone die and thinking they were going to go to heaven and end up in the gates of hell forever. You know what's even worse beside that? You dying in your sins, thinking that whatever you were told to say, whatever it was, but you ended up in hell. And that preacher, that Christian, that whoever, actually ends up in heaven. You have feared the sword. Wait a minute, uh, verse 7. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Your slain whom ye had laid in the midst of it, they are the flesh. Now here's God quoting them. The city of the cauldron, but I will bring you forth out of the midst of it. So, it's interesting that I don't know how much it goes into it. I'm trying to find it here. But if you go to Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 1, Thou son of man, take thee a tile and lay it before thee. And portray upon it the city, even Jerusalem. Now we read, you can go get chapter 4. Lay siege against it, build a fort against it, cast a mountain against it, set a camp against it, set battery rams against it, round about. Therefore take unto thee an iron pan. I know that's not a cauldron, but set it for a wall. An iron between thee and the city, set thy face against it. That's interesting. God's quote in them, verse 7. But I will bring you forth out of the midst of it. There will be some that God will bring forth. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo. Jeremiah, though he doesn't go to Babylon. Ezekiel, he's an example. Ezra, Nehemiah, and all the, the names of the people. You have feared the sword. I will bring the sword upon you. There are rich people in the world. They got more riches and gain more riches. They're ungodly. They don't live right. And then you say, well, they died rich. Yeah, but they're in hell poor. They got the worst health they could ever have in hell. Everything that they feared happens to them in hell. Insecurity. Pain and suffering. Hatred. You're not the top banana. Your friends don't like you and you're no partying. People, you got to read and study your Bible. I'm telling you. 
I will bring you out of the midst of it and deliver you into the hands of strangers. Babylonians. So Ezekiel is preaching what Jeremiah is preaching. Jeremiah is preaching what Ezekiel is preaching. Both to get, I don't know if these two ever ran, to, ran into each other. But you know what would be funny? You know what? Did we not see Jeremiah at the temple? Do we not see Ezekiel? Would it not be funny if there had been times set by God? Ezekiel's at the east side of the temple preaching and Jeremiah at the west side preaching. I don't know. But these two are both priests. They're both at the temple. I don't know at the same time. But you do know that Jeremiah went to Babylon, the Euphrates River, with the garter, the, the, uh, the garment. I always got to wonder, did Ezekiel and Jeremiah, did it? And the Holy Spirit, where do you take me back? I'm going to go over and see Jeremiah. Because Jeremiah, except for Baruch and the Ethiopian eunuch, he had no friends. Wouldn't it be interesting if Jeremiah learned, hey, Ezekiel's over there, and he's preaching the same thing you're preaching. Ezekiel, you're down in the dump, Jeremiah's over there preaching the same thing, and he ain't got no converts. And we have verse 10. Ye shall fall by the sword, death, armies. I will judge you in the border of Israel, inside the border of the land. I'm going to judge you. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, number eight. Remember that? How shall you know that I am the Lord? You're going to die, you're going to end up in hell. Wow. An atheist will die and become a Bible believer when he enters into hell. Walk in a cemetery. I don't care what cemetery you are. You walk into a cemetery and say, Hello, everybody, there are Bible believers here today. And I would even go so far, Hello, all you Bible believers today, King James Bible believers. You may have read the NIV, but you're a King James Bible believer now. You may have not believed in God. I don't believe in God. You believe in God now. You may have had the Pope, and you know the Pope can't save you because you're in the same hell with your Pope. Any cemetery. There are times I, I, when my wife died, and I go visit her grave, and then I go visit family graves, and we had a time, my, my second wife, we went to go find a, a grave of her aunt, and there are other times we were in the cemetery. I'd be in that cemetery and say, you're a Bible believer, you're a Bible believer, you're a Bible believer, you're a Bible believer. And the person I'm standing on is a Bible believer. Now, I don't know if they're in heaven or hell, but I know they're Bible believers. And the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God, atheist. It's a very harsh fact of the Old Testament and of life in the New Testament, really, you shall know that I am the Lord when you are dead in hell. Too late. That'd be like you go out, I mean, you go, you put some cookies in the oven, and you go out in your car, you go run to the store for something, and you come home and you realize your whole house is on fire. And you go in after that and you turn off the oven. Too late. Too late. Well, I knew I, I left the oven on. Oh, too late. Well, I know. I, I now believe in the God that that man preached. I believe in that gospel track. I got. And if you're in hell, it's too late. You know what that rich man said in hell? He told Abraham, "Will you go to my family and tell them don't come to this place?" That man knew in hell there was a way out of hell. He couldn't get out. That was number eight. Ye shall know I am the Lord. 
I forget how many we have, but I'm hopefully going to keep count. Hopefully I stay right with the numbering. I could forget. Verse 11. This city shall not be your cauldron. There's no protection. God's going to put the iron pan over you. The rain's going to stop. And if he puts that iron pan over the cauldron, you're inside cooking. You cook even quicker. I used to, when I cook, and if I, if I wanted water to get hot quick, because I'm impatient, I put the water in there, I put some salt in there, I put a lid on that thing, because the water will get quicker or hotter. And when I'm ready to do my, whatever I was cooking, boiling that, then I take the lid off. It ain't going to hurry. I mean, it ain't going to make it quick and all that, but it, it makes it quicker boiling. Neither shall ye be the flesh that's in the midst of us. What they were saying is that cauldron and being the flesh, oh, we're just so protected in Did not they think, oh, we're the, there's fire outside that cauldron, you're being cooked? But I will judge you in the border of Israel. In this land I will judge you. Verse 12. You shall know that I am the Lord. Number 9. When the Babylonian army comes and they judge you. That's what they did to Jeremiah. The, the leader that came up and said, We did this because you failed your God. You wouldn't listen to his commandment. You wouldn't listen to his death. Gave Jeremiah the riot act, not giving him the, the riot act that, Jeremiah, you are wrong. Jeremiah, everything you said is right, and this Gentile is telling you so. You know, the worst thing I ever had as a Christian, and I've said this many times, is I used to witness when I drank beer. I would witness to co-workers in a bar with a beer and shooting pool. I was newly saved. I had one time my, my, my best friend and I I prayed for him. I hope he's still alive. I hope he's saved. But I, I thought he pulled me off the side one day. He said, you know what? He says, you've given me a ride to work when I need one and you put on your Christian tapes and you give me these things to read. you got your Bible. You read your Bible and all that. And you've been telling us about Jesus. But is this bar, is that beer, and shooting pool, is that what you're supposed to be telling me about Jesus? You know, when a Gentile, when a lost man comes up and rebukes you, it's like, ow. Lord, that, that hurt. I'll tell you one thing. I gave up. Right then and there, I gave up the pool. Right then and there, I gave up the bar. You know, it took me a little while for the alcohol, but I gave, I gave that up. And when God saw my hurt like that, and I'd be out witnessing, I'm wearing a, a, a cigarette t-shirt, and God would say, look down. Yeah. Is that the kind of shirt you should be wearing, serving me? I mean, you putting your cigarettes on the altar, you're trying to quit, you're telling me you're praying, but, but you're wearing the, the advertisement of that. And then I stopped wearing those shirts. Ye shall know I am the Lord. What did it do for Daniel? When we, Lord willing, we get to the life of Daniel. What had happened to Daniel... That he is the man who he is in the book of Daniel. But you got to ask yourself, what was Daniel like before the captivity? We don't know that, do we? But, now people have heard my testimony. I give my testimony because I'm a public witness and, and the ministry is on that. But there's a lot of, there, there are a lot of people who don't know all of my history. There are a lot of people who don't know any of my history. But they know the Christian side of my life. 
I know that God is the Lord. Thank God. Thank the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank for Calvary. Thank for the blood of Jesus Christ and the gospel. I know that he is the Lord. I am the Lord. God speaking. I didn't learn that in hell. I learned that today in my grandmother's living room when a man with a King James Bible told me I was going to hell and I got down on my knees and I don't remember what I said but I asked the Lord to save me. How do I know the Lord saved me? The next day I'm out preaching about hell. I, I get very lean to people. Oh, they're going to save. They're going to save. Well, first of all, when the pastor said they got saved, well, it doesn't say with the heart man believes in the righteous and your pastor's mouth shall confess. No, it says your mouth. There are some people in Israel, they're going to know that I am the Lord because they lost everything. They are in Babylon. Do you realize there are people today who lost their family to COVID-19? They lost their family to the fires of California. They have lost everything from the hurricane. They have lost everything through all the, the tragedy and the volcanoes. And everything that's going on in the world today. They had lost everything. And they know that the Lord is the Lord that I am. Because they put their faith and trust in Jesus. And there are people today. The, the, the crisis. The, the vaccines. The COVID. The fires. The earthquakes. The volcanoes. The hurricane. And they died without Jesus, rejecting the gospel, and they are in hell and they know, I am the Lord, number eight, number nine. There are people at the farmer's market where I preach in Daytona Beach, they're going to wake up one day, they're going to know I am the Lord. Not me, I mean God. Whether they wake up in heaven or they wake up in hell. They're going to say one day that preacher was right. Glory to God if you're in heaven, my Jesus. Who cares if you believe that in hell? Every knee is going to, Jesus, thou art the Lord. Every knee. It's too late when you're bowing at knees saying, Jesus is the Lord. And to the lake of fire. Slash. That's too late. Number eight and nine. For ye have not walked in my statutes. That's the law. That's the Jews. That's the Hebrew. That's the Old Testament. Don't you say there are Christians in the Old Testament? It ain't by the statutes. It's by Calvary I know the Lord. And it took me some time to know the Lord even after Calvary. And I'm still learning about the Lord. I still open up my Bible and still, wow. Neither execute my judgments, but have done after the manners of the heathen. Sunrise service, the tamers, the queen of heaven, the altars on every street corner, the sun, the moon, and the stars. Which you read about throughout the Old Testament in Jeremiah. God told them when you get in that land, Wipe them all out. Because if you don't, that's exactly what will happen to you. Joshua got in there and they put the old shoes on, got the old moldy bread. And, oh yeah, we'll make friendship with you. You failed. Joshua was a mighty man of power. Was he? You tell me one time when Joshua prayed. Go ahead. Give me the chapter and verse when Joshua prayed. Because he sure didn't pray to God about the people that were in the land he was supposed to get rid of and kill. That's a Jew. They're not Christians. And it came to pass when I prophesied Ezekiel Everything that Ezekiel just said, that's prophecy. You're going to die. You're going to know one day that the Lord is I am. I heard a man, well, there's no prophets in the church age. Yes, there is. 
When I tell you, if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to go to hell. When you put your faith and trust in Jesus, in the day that you die outside of the rapture, you're gonna you're gonna be absent from that body, and present with the Lord, unless the rapture happens. I'm a prophet. Now I don't have no sleepy dreams and visions, and I got a dream and my tea leaves and bumps on my head, and the horoscope, and I don't have all that. I got the King James Bible. I can tell you where you're gonna go when you die. Now, I don't have the, the power to actually to say, that man went to hell, that man went, I don't have that. There are people in my family, that I think they went to hell. I don't know. I'm sure hoping that there was somewhere in their life, and a couple of them like, I doubt it, but I don't know. But I do know one thing, if they rejected Jesus, they're in hell. And if they're at a point in their life, they believe on Jesus and trusted in Jesus, they're in heaven. That's prophecy. I prophesied and Pedaliah, the son of Benaiah, died. Go to Jeremiah 28. You're going to see a parallel. Jeremiah 28. Oh, 17? Yeah, 17. And you go back and get Jeremiah 28. But just going to read the last verse. The parallel between, I want you to see Jeremiah and Ezekiel, they're working together. It's not Jeremiah, this lone little, oh, the God, oh, fruitcake. And I'm telling, not telling you, Ezekiel's out there, you know, the holy roller. <laughs> These two are working together. So Hananiah the prophet died the same year, the same month. Gee, that sounds familiar. You know, word got around with that. You know, Jeremiah prayed, and that guy dropped dead. Well, you know, did you hear what happened in Babylon? No. Ezekiel prayed, and the guy dropped dead. What? Are you kidding me? No. That raised a stir. Then I fell, then fell I down on my face. And cried with a loud voice. You're not going to get no revival in churches today. They're not going to do that. You know what's a chain? You know what's a chain? You know what's a chain? You know who get down their voice and cry to God? Muslims. To Allah. And they'll do it in California with the schools, with the children facing Mecca. With the prayer mats. You can't even get a Christian to show up to church Sunday night. If there's a Sunday night or a Wednesday night prayer meeting. And we're going to have revival. No, you're not. I'm appalled of all the years Christians show up to church in shorts. Now, I'll wear slacks. I am not into suits. But I will wear respectfully good pants. For Sunday morning and a good shirt. I will wear a clean pair of blue jeans Wednesday night, but I, I, you know, there's. But you're not going to get a revival because you're not as. What's the word I'm trying to think of? You're not as faithful. Uh, let's give me out. As a Muslim. And you're sure not as faithful of witnessing the lost people as a Jehovah Witness. And you're sure not reaching out to the outer parts of the world as a a Mormon who gets on his bicycle. Baptist. And listen, I've come through many... Uh, you see all my fingers? I've, I've been in more churches than I have fingers. Members of many more. And I have gone to the visitation night of the church. I had one church. The guy looked at me. He's a missionary today. He said, I guess it's just you and me tonight. Let's go. 
I had another time, we, we had a good Baptist church visitation. The pastor said, you, you've never been door knocking before? I said, no, sir, I haven't. Well, sir, I have, but I, and I explained the worldly carnal way of that. He said, well, we're going to have to teach you, and since I'm the only one hearing you, I'll teach you. Come and dine, the master calleth. Come and dine. 45, 46 people, 47 people, 20 people. I was in a church one time, my wife Lisa. This church, we'd have church in the morning. We'd skip the Sunday evening service because we would have a fellowship. One time Lisa came up to me. She says, you know what's interesting, hon? I said, what's that? She says, I counted the people. I said, Lisa? No, no, she's listen to me. She said, we have more people to show up to, to the barbecue than we're in church this morning. I said, well, what do you mean? Well, why did you do what you did? And, said, and I was like, I'm interested. She said, you know, if we to have everybody who came to this fellowship. I said, yeah. She says, what I counted, she said, we would not have enough seats in the pews of the church. And listen, she was fairly newly saved. I was I was still on the bound. And that, was it. that taught me a lesson. My wife taught me a lesson. With your fellowships and all that. You will bring more people to the fellowship. And some of them didn't come and hear the message. Let me say it again. Some of them did not come to hear the message. You better believe, Christians, I have lived a life with these churches, these pastors, and these Christians. I've been through some interesting things that God has brought me. I call them file cabinet of lessons of life. I fell down upon my face and cried with a loud voice. I, don't see, I have not seen anybody do that in a Baptist church. I bet you somebody in the Pentecostal church done that. And I said, oh, Lord God. One way a Baptist day would cry, Oh Lord God, and when they're sitting in the boss's office and they see a pink slip coming. They'll say that today. Oh Lord God, Biden wants me to get the vaccine. Oh Lord God. Will thou make a full end of the remnant of you know what Ezekiel's concerned about? You see what did you see what Jeremiah? Ezekiel's looking at the thing and Jeremiah's like, God, are you going to kill everybody? That's how bad it is. Now, people, there's some people that say, you know, there's going to be a revival. I don't believe that in the churches. I believe the churches are vile, wicked, and broke. I read Revelation. You realize, I, I forget the name of the husband and wife in the book of Acts. They lied to the Holy Spirit. Peter's Peter spoke to him. They dropped dead at the door. I think if you were to do that to the Baptist church today, I don't think there'd be enough people to come along and bury the, the bodies. I don't give no good conclusions of the church today. Absolutely not, and I include myself. Don't like what I say? Take it up with God.